Hi, welcome to the Centre for Independent Studies YouTube channel. I'm Jessica Brown and I'm here with Dr John Lee, who's written a new report for the CIS titled Malaysian Dilemma, the Enduring Cancer of Affirmative, of Affirmative Action. John, perhaps you can start by taking us through this affirmative action policy in Malaysia. What's the history of it? These uh, policies began in 1971. Malaysia went through a very traumatic racial riot in 1969 where the indigenous uh, Malays and the Chinese clashed in the streets, leading to around 200 deaths. Since 1971, the government has instituted a wide-ranging policies of redistribution among to the Malays and also poverty reduction amongst the Malays. So uh, it, these have been a result of uh, the 1969 racial riots. What's the ethnic mix in Malaysia? When the racial riots began, it was about 55% Malays, 35-40% uh, Chinese and 10% Indians. Currently it's about 65% Malays, 30% uh, Chinese and 10% Indians. And after 1971, when these affirmative action policies were introduced, what's the impact of those been? Have they been successful? They have been successful when it comes to poverty reduction. Uh, in 1971, around 60% of Malays lived in poverty. Now it's perhaps 5-10%. Although the argument is that it's, it's uh, more a case of general economic growth as opposed to these policies per se that, that has uh, achieved that. But the more controversial aspect is the redistribution and restructuring policies. Uh, because so much of the country's wealth has now been transferred into the hands of Malays through government policy, not through market forces. Uh, you have a lot of wastage in the country, you have unsustainable budget deficits, and you have the emergence of a rent-seeking uh, Malay elite, uh, which is enormously expensive to the country and to the state. And a lot of critics have now come out and said that this is damaging to Malaysia's economic future. Um, this is where the new economic model came in. Can you take us through that? The new economic model uh, was pronounced by the current Prime Minister, Najib. Um, and he was the first Malaysian Prime Minister to explicitly link Malaysia's structural problems with the affirmative action policies. In terms of these affirmative action policies, you have things like privileged bank loans to Malays, uh, special ownership rights for Malays in the most lucrative sectors uh, of the economy, uh, education scholarships that are intended just for Malays, and even uh, preferential home ownership arrangements for the Malays. It, it encompasses every aspect of economic and social life. The new economic model uh, agrees that these policies are too costly for the country. For Malaysia to regain its dynamic economic status, it needs to wind back these policies and that's what the new economic model is about. And what about the feeling on the ground amongst Malaysians? Do they support these changes or do they want to retain the affirmative action policies? The problem for the Prime Minister Najib is that the, the maj vast majority of Malays support revising these policies but not abandoning them. You have the emergence of a fairly small group of Malay elites benefiting from these policies. Now, the vast majority of Malays don't want to abolish these policies, they just want a share of, of that affirmative action pie. So there's actually not a lot of support for abolishing uh, these, these policies, uh, despite uh, Prime Minister Najib's appeal. I imagine that among this sort of rent-seeking class or the elites that are benefiting from these policies, who would be very powerful um, and in government in many cases, there'd be a lot of pushback on this. That's correct. If you look at UMNO, the Malay governing party, they've been in power for 40 years. Um, it's unlikely that the rank and file will want to change that strategy and, and risk losing power, particularly after the bad showing in the 2008 elections. If you look at the civil service, it's 95% uh, Malay dominated. They're the strongest supporters of the affirmative action policies and they're the ones who are called to implement uh, the new economic model. So, so that's a very difficult thing. And once again, you look at the Malay uh, business people and also the, the Chinese elites uh, who have actually uh, benefited from these policies by making connections with the Malay elites. Almost all of the elite groups in Malaysia do not want to abolish these policies. That's a great difficulty. But I imagine that if you're talking about foreign direct investment and investment into Malaysia, is this a real hindrance? It's a massive hindrance. Uh, foreign direct investment has slowed to uh, around 10% of what it was uh, 10 years ago. If you look at uh, investment in Malaysia at the moment, more than half of it is government investment, not private investment. So the private sector, both domestic and foreign, are voting defeat. Um, their capital is exiting the country and that's a very big problem for Malaysia. So how successful do you think this new move towards 
dismantling these affirmative action policies is going to be? Is it just rhetoric or is there some real action happening? Well, I think Prime Minister Najib has begun the debate proper to, to link Malaysia's problems with the affirmative action policies. That's unique for Malaysian Prime Minister. But having said that, he doesn't have the political power, the bureaucratic power or the, the social power or support from the social elites to actually achieve these policies. So unfortunately, the early signs are that, that uh, Prime, the Prime Minister Najib is winding back um, his early uh, desires to, to change these policies. And I think you'll see very much of the status quo. Okay, well, let's hope that there's some action. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dr. John Lee, and thanks for watching.